Praise be to the living God. I'd like to uh, thank you for joining us once again at Understanding the Father's Heart Ministries. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown. And if this is your first time uh, joining us, we surely would like to uh, let you know that you know, some of the studies that we do here at uh, Acadia and Open Channel, uh, when we get to this particular day, uh, we usually have done several other studies before. So it would be very important that you would keep up with us. You can do that on YouTube at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown. We have a, a plethora of uh, videos that you can watch and and not only that we are studying now through uh, the book of Romans uh, the letter to the Romans that was written by the Apostle Paul a very powerful book but beloved some of the things that are being revealed are even a revelation to my own mind some things I had never thought of before uh, and one of them was, I felt, was very uh, eye-opening to know this, that, you know, as born-again believers, uh, especially us who are called Gentiles, and as I said before, Gentiles are those who are not Jews, and to know the fact that God has called us to follow the Holy Spirit and not to follow after the law like many try to do these days. The law was given to the Jews. It was never given to the Gentiles. But Gentiles follow God's law through the Holy Spirit of God. The only two commandments truly that Jesus gave us and told us to remember is this, to love thy God with all thy mind, thy soul, thy heart, and everything that is witty indeed, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Those two commandments, as Jesus said, fulfill everything that you need to do as a born-again believer. Well, you say, well, how can I really uh, fulfill the law? Beloved, follow the Holy Spirit. If you allow the Holy Spirit of God to lead you, then you will fulfill the law. It is simple as that. Um, remember, when the Jews were given the law, they never followed them. They did their very best. Some of them did. Well, you know, all the 699 laws that is written in the Word of God that many Christians say today that they follow, that you need to follow the law in order that you would be saved. Beloved, they got it backwards. But rather we to follow the Holy Spirit, who Jesus Christ said, I will send unto you in that day on the day of Pentecost, and that spirit that the Spirit will live in you and it will guide you to where? To all truth. So if I follow the Holy Spirit, beloved, the law is fulfilled in following the Spirit of God. Many do not truly understand that today, but beloved, we're going to try to elaborate on that just a little more today. But you really need to go back on the past uh, six days of lesson. They're not long. Some of them are less than uh, six minutes. And it would and, and, and read them from the, uh, 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 not read them, but look at them from the Monday uh, through the Friday. And... See what they're saying, and it's a build-up to what we are actually talking about today. Amen? And you know, and one person actually uh, um, uh, wrote to me about the fact that they didn't really realize that when Paul wrote his letters, or when Paul spoke to individuals, or other disciples spoke to individuals, they were speaking to Jews as well as Gentiles. And sometimes he was speaking directly to the Jews, as we'll find out today, and really wasn't speaking to the Gentiles, even though the Gentiles were part of the 
uh, fellowship at that particular time. Most people don't realize that your first Christians were Jews. Now, knowing that is very important because it makes you realize that when the disciples were writing or speaking, they were speaking to people who had been entrenched in the laws. And now they were sharing with them how now grace had supplanted uh, the law. Not took away the law, but supplanted the law in order that there was a new requirement now in order to be saved. They couldn't be saved through the law because the law doesn't speak of salvation. The law speaks of obedience, not salvation. The law was, one might say, um, not very personal. God would give laws, but they weren't very personal. But now, you and I, through grace and mercy and the Holy Spirit, we actually have a relationship with the Heavenly Father. There is nowhere that I have found that any Jew ever called God their Father. The first time they ever heard anyone speak that way is when Jesus taught them how to pray. When he said, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. They knew God in a sense as a father of their nation. And they look at Father Abraham and all those uh, leaders that God sent unto them. But beloved, they never ever call God Father as though he was truly their father. But now, because the curtain has been torn down and the Jew and the Gentiles now have become one. Beloved, God is great. God is powerful. Beloved, Yahweh is his name. And you know what, beloved? They would not even use his name in the old, uh, old covenant. They never uttered his name. But beloved, we call him our Father in heaven. Amen. Beloved, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you would open up our understanding as we delve into your holy and divine word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, there are those who talk about following the law and how much you need the law in order to be saved. Beloved, that is not true. What you need to do is follow the Holy Spirit of God who will follow God's laws. Amen? Amen? Glory be to God. Look what the Word of God says. I want you to turn that with me if you have your Bibles in Romans 2. Uh, uh, yeah. And the 29th verse, it reads, uh, there's 2 and 29. It says uh, uh, this. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, in the spirit, and not in the letter, which is the law, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Beloved, what we want to talk about is circumcision is of the heart. Amen? This is what Paul is writing about. That now we who are born again believers and those who have been born again who are Jews, it is no longer circumcision of the flesh that makes you right with God, but now it is a circumcision of, of the heart. Now I want us to look at uh, um, the 21st verse of that same chapter number two uh, because uh, Paul is addressing the Jews because I said uh, in one of our earlier studies uh, that the Jewish people felt that they had it all together everything was lined up with them so when the Gentiles came in they look upon them and many times they look down uh, upon uh, them but what they did not realize is this here, that they were using double standard just as men do today. 
and women use double standards for different people. But they didn't realize this, that God is not a respecter of persons. Though the Jews believed they were privileged due to their status with knowing God, but never had they known him as father as Jesus had told the disciples. And that is very transformative to the mind. To know that God is your father. He is just not God. You notice that many people even today, they speak about God and how great God is. But beloved, when you can speak of him as your father, when you wake up in the morning, you say, my father, oh, I love you, father. Father, you are the greatest. Father, thank you for blessing my life. Father, I thank you for being my father, that I can cry out to you from the depths of my spirit. Abba, father, you are my father. Yes, I am born into your family. Beloved, that is a new life. That is a new way. But many of the Jewish uh, congregants that were part of the audience, they did not see it that way. They were leaning more toward the Mosaic law. And they were thinking that it was enough in order for them even to still get into the kingdom of God. Their whole mind had to be regenerated to a new way of thinking. That no longer could they work their way into heaven. Even though, beloved, that never worked anyway. Because the word of God tells us in Galatians that the law was simply given as a tutor in order to prepare and get Man ready in order to ultimately accept what Jesus Christ was going to bring, which was grace and mercy. And beloved, not only that, but the recognition and the filling and the indwelling and the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God. The Word tells us, if the Spirit that Jesus had reside in him is not in us, then we will not be raised up in that latter day to be with the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit of God, beloved, that makes all the difference in the world. The Jews were given uh, insight. They were given given uh, guidance and direction. It was through the law in how to live. You and I no longer take the law in the way we ought to live or follow the law in order to cause us to live the way that we should. But rather, beloved, we follow the Holy Spirit of God. And so when Paul was addressing the Jews, which were part of the audience with the Gentiles, or when he was writing to them, he was letting them know, you can no longer <clears throat> rely upon that, on your goodness, but you have to now rely upon the Holy Spirit of God in order to guide you. And as he was writing, he said, <clears throat> he write them this, in this way. He said, Thou therefore, which teachest another, teach thou not thyself? You teaching others, are you not teaching yourself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, do you steal? That's what he's telling the, Jew, the, Jew, uh, the Jewish brethren. Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, does thou commit adultery? Sacrilege? Thou that makest thou boast, get this now, thou boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonor it thy God. You boast about the law, but you're constantly breaking the law. There are Christians today 
who say they walk in the law. But yet they're breaking the law every day. And you say, well, brother, how are they breaking the law every day? Are they following all 699 laws that is in God's word? Are they? I've asked brothers and sisters that before, and many of them say, well, I don't know what the 699 laws are. Surely I'm not following them all. It's impossible for me to follow them all. Well, you know, if you break one, then you are guilty of them all. But if you follow the Holy Spirit of God, and you go wayward, then the Holy Spirit calls you back, and you're getting back in line with the Holy Spirit, and continue to follow the Holy Spirit. Isn't that much more simpler, much more easier to do than it is to try to figure out, am I doing all the laws, all 699 of them? And believers tell me all the time that they are following the laws of God. How they are following the laws of God if you're not doing all 699 of them? There was only one who fulfilled the laws of God, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I'm sending one that will lead you and guide you, that will teach you, just as I did. But now he will live on the inside of you. Follow ye him. So if I follow him, then I will fulfill the law. Because, beloved, get this. The law must be fulfilled in order for us to go to heaven. Because God state those laws. Those laws now are written in heaven. I have to fulfill each and every one of them in order for me to one day go into glory with the Lord. I have to fulfill every one of them. How can I possibly do that when I don't even know all of them? Do you know one of the laws that many people break today, especially we who live in South Louisiana? The Bible tells us not to eat any fish that does not have scales on it. That's a law. And if you eat anything that has no scales on it, then you are breaking the law. And the law breaking makes you unclean. You can't go to the high priest now and do a sacrifice because you broke that law then that means that law stays with you and you're stained with that law. When you're following the law as your guide, beloved, when the last time you had some catfish, well, you broke the law of God. When the last time you went to church on Sunday rather than on the Sabbath, which is Saturday, that's a, one of the Ten Commandments, beloved that we follow the uh what it says right me them say oh i follow all the commandments well beloved i know you believe that sunday is the sabbath but sunday have never been the sabbath saturday have always been the sabbath from the beginning of time uh, that's when the Lord rested. So if you're not, get this now, if you're not worshiping on the Sabbath, then you are breaking the law of God, which makes you unclean, unfit, unregenerate for the kingdom of God. Now you got to get rid of that, that, that stain, that sin. How do you get rid of it? The way the Jews got rid of it. How did they get rid of it? They brought sacrifices to the temple. Can you do that today? No, you can't. Amen? So, beloved, we have to understand why the Holy Spirit was given so that way we wouldn't have to fulfill the law like many people try to get you to do. Beloved, when we get that understanding, we find freedom. We find freedom to walk in the grace of God. 
And you know, there are those who say, well, I, I don't want people to know about God's grace that way because they're just going to walk all over God's laws and reject them and they, they're going to do what they want to do and they're going to rebel and fall away. Let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you something, sister. Rebellion is already in those people's heart. Those people were never the children of God. It's just as simple as that. Because if knowing about God's grace calls you now to abuse that grace, it's simply because you never really knew Him. One who has been born again by the Spirit of the living God, when they find out about the grace of God, they want to know, how can I stop sinning? How can I become, as Jesus said, perfect as the Father is perfect in heaven? That's what they want to know. Not how can I find a loophole. No, beloved. The, uh, true Christians are not looking for a loophole. They're looking for a way to get closer with their Lord and with their God. So, beloved, the law is not going to keep anybody clean. It is the Spirit of God that does the guidance uh, for us. Now, Paul <clears throat> was writing to the Jews, for he says, in the 24th verse, he says, For, uh, no, 23, Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking of the law, dishonoring thy God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles, through you, Jews, the Gentiles are confused and they are not knowing exactly what to believe because you are saying that just simply being a Jew and simply trying to follow God's laws is enough. And we can do what we want to do because we are God's chosen people. And Paul is writing to say absolutely not. Matter of fact, you're blaspheming the name of the Lord right before the eyes of now your brother who the Gentiles are now because you we have become one. So he was rebuking the, the Jews at this particular time. For he says, For circumcision very, verily do profit if thou keep the law. If you keep the whole law, then yes, circumcision will profit you. But if thou is a breaker of the law, Thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. If you're eating pork, which is against God's law, if you are eating catfish, which is against God's law, or anything that God says that was unclean, then you're breaking God's law. So that makes you a law breaker. Amen? So it says, therefore, if circumcision keep the righteousness of the law shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision. And another thing, you who are following the law, especially males, have you been circumcised? Are you circumcised today? Or have you were you circumcised on the eighth day after you birthed that it would been, have been done properly? You know, God takes that serious when you say that you're following His law and you say that you're keeping His law. He takes that very seriously. You know, the Word of God says, and I know you are remembered, that when Moses had his son uh, with Zipporah and he let it bypass because uh, uh, he let it bypass and he didn't circumcise his son when he should have. And you know what the Word of God says? That God, get this now, Moses now, the one who was going to lead the people out of Egypt into the promised land. Beloved, God was laying wait to take Moses' life. Why? Because he did not fulfill his obligation to circumcise his son. And rather, his wife did it. And she called him a bloody man because she circumcised his 
son. Beloved, the Lord takes it serious when you say that you're following his laws and you're not committed to following all 699 plus laws in his word. He takes it very seriously. And so, beloved, if you're not going to follow all of them, every one of them, then turn away from that type of thinking and begin to follow the Holy Spirit who will fulfill the laws of God. Beloved, many are doing that in this day. He says, And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, by nature, men are, are not circumcised. If it fulfill the law. Judge thee, who by the letter and the circumcision does transgress the law. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But, where we started from, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. Get that now, beloved. In the what spirit and not in the letter, which is the law, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Beloved, we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God in order to fulfill the law of God. And the more you begin to understand that, the more you will begin to walk in the freedom that God has for you. Beloved, I pray that you will continue to join us in our studies. Join us uh, Monday uh, throughout the week. Uh, we put out a, a video on YouTube each and every day. And beloved, it speaks on certain issues that will cause you to grow and cause you to see the Word of God as the life that it was supposed to be able to give us. And beloved, we're studying directly from the Word, so it's no uh, uh, doubt that it's God's Word that we are speaking on. And beloved, we pray that the Lord bless you in a very powerful way, and we pray if the Lord touch your heart that you get in touch with us, and you can at Evangelist Joseph a. Brown, Post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana, 70592. Whatever reason that the Lord put upon your heart, you might just want to send us a note saying, Hey, look, we love the program. Uh, and we very well appreciate that. Just know that we love you, we pray for you, and we ask that you continue to pray for us as we uh, continue to teach and to share God's word. Because, beloved, let me tell you this. The enemy do not like God's word being shared. Amen? He doesn't. He doesn't. And if he could stop it right now and put an end to it, he would. But, beloved, praise be to God. We trust in Almighty God and we believe by faith that he is the one who keeps us. Beloved, be blessed until we meet again.